Ethereum in 2022. What are your thoughts? My guess, I still think higher. I still think higher. I still think we actually got a, a, a strong run to come. I think these kind of this kind of year long sideways correction that we've essentially had is just a springing board to further gains as more adoption rolls out, more use cases roll out, uh, et cetera. The cryptocurrency space is exciting and nerve wracking at the same time. While the price of Bitcoin is 38% lower than its 69,000 price high three months ago, the amount of Bitcoin left on exchanges is at its lowest figure since April 2021. At the end of July last year, there was 2.59 million Bitcoin held by crypto trading platforms, and today there's only 2.36 million held by exchanges, which means that there's 8.8% fewer Bitcoin on exchanges than six months ago. Recently, Real Vision CEO and global macro investor Raul Paul examined the most recent crypto price trends, including Bitcoin crashes, new altcoins entering the game, and Ethereum's growth in 2022. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, Raul Paul talks about Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoins, and more. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the post notifications. Let's dive right into the video. I think there's a number of factors at play. I think the main factor is if you think of the marginal investor in, in Bitcoin, um, the average person, the, the adoption, right? Those people have seen prices rise 10% in terms of their everyday cost of living, but the wages haven't gone up that much. So what you've taken is marginal consumption away or their ability to invest, stick a few more dollars into Bitcoin. That has gone left the market. We've seen network growth slow down. The other thing that happened was obviously the Chinese left the market. And so that's left the market in a slightly less stable way because you've taken out a whole bunch of demand. Now, there are plenty of Chinese still in the market, but you took out a lot of that. So with those two factors and then kind of the overall sort of fear of the tightening of monetary policy and what that could do to other financial markets, you know, if you think there's new participants in this now, there's people like hedge funds. And if they're, you know, one portfolio is blowing up, they end up having to reduce risk elsewhere. So everything starts becoming a bit correlated. So I think those were the primary drivers behind what's been going on. The cryptocurrency bull, Raul Paul, had revealed in a tweet that now he only owns a single Bitcoin. This announcement was not accepted by his followers, as they followed him for his cryptocurrencies ever since he had claimed that Ethereum and other altcoins might perform better than Bitcoin. Clearing the air about his tweet, Raul clarifies the reason behind owning just one Bitcoin is his portfolio. Generally speaking, listen, I am, I understand there's a philosophy to the space and people wants there to be, you know, Bitcoin at the base center of money, and that may end up playing out over time. But my job is as an investor, not a philosopher. And my job as an investor is to look for better returns. So a long time ago, about a year and a half ago, I switched most of my Bitcoin holdings into ETH. And then I bought a basket of, of alts of different to get different exposure, to different parts of the market, because you don't really know what's going to get traction and what's not. So over time, I continued to reallocate my Bitcoin into ETH. Um, I always wanted to keep a bit of Bitcoin because you want to you know, cheer for the team as well. But also, you know, the other the thing that I get people, Bitcoin maxes hate me for is like, this is a network and a community. If you are fundamentally awful to people joining your community, people want to leave. And that's just a matter of fact. And if you get picked on every time you say anything that could possibly be perceived as anything negative on Bitcoin, um, on Bitcoin then you, after a while you think, it. why even bother? Now, you'd bother if it was outperforming, but it's not. And I think the network growth in Bitcoin has been slower than people have expected. And this is one of the reasons. I mean, institutions just don't like this kind of stuff the toxicity that can exist. I mean, there's tons of good people in Bitcoin. And, you know, I understand the philosophy. And if that's your point of view on the philosophy, great. But don't attack other people, because then it becomes like a religion. 
Raul Paul also addresses the questions regarding Bitcoin's price prediction and whether it will reach 500,000 or not. Raul Paul, give me a true and false, true or false in your opinion on this statement. Bitcoin is the most decentralized, the most censorship resistant out of all the cryptocurrencies and is our one shot to maybe separate money from state. True. Okay. Just checking. Tyler Winklevoss, Catherine, Kathy Wood, you know, a lot of notable investors, they believe Bitcoin will reach at least $500,000 per coin, you know, equating to the market cap of gold. Would you agree with that possibility as well? Yeah, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Very cool. cool. And how do you think it gets there? Yeah. It gets there, I think. I don't think it's going to be as much retail adoption. Um, I think that moves elsewhere within the crypto web three kind of world. Um, I think it's actually going to be driven by sovereign wealth funds, large asset allocation, stuff of that type. I think we're only just starting to see that. But you know, it, it, if, it's, if it holds true to its hypothesis that it is a base layer of money, then really it should be for those who accumulate base layer of money, people like sovereign wealth funds, central banks and, and others. Um, because in theory, if that's correct, then it's a less speculative or risky asset. Therefore, it has less returns over time. And that's OK, too. There's nothing wrong with that. Raul Paul shares his thoughts about the most recent Bitcoin versus Ethereum controversy and whether Ethereum will flip Bitcoin or not. I still think risk adjusted. ETH will do extremely well over time. Just because, you know, the reason why it's expensive to use is because it's so damn popular, right? And so, you know, it's like a chain of prestige now for things to be built on because it is the more decentralized of all of the other layer ones. So it makes sense to me. I think with the change towards ETH 2.0 coming as well, I think that narrative will build over time as well. So I still think the upside in ETH is massive. Um, in terms of market cap, where could it go? You know, it could still, it can go another 10x from here in terms of market cap alone. Um, over what period of time? Who knows? Do you think Ethereum will flip Bitcoin in 2022 or do you think it'll flip Bitcoin ever? Yeah, I think it will. Whether it's 2022 or not, don't really have a strong view. My guess is probably, probably. And, and again, that shouldn't be taken as, oh, ETH's better than Bitcoin. They, it's like comparing Apple's market cap with Tesla's market cap. They're just two entirely different things, and that's okay. Although the daily price action of the crypto sector remains volatile and is likely to continue to hold this pattern for some time, these digital assets are difficult to value and are therefore prone to larger price swings on macro news. That said, the underlying catalysts these tokens are seeing right now are interesting in their own right. Investors looking at the three largest cryptocurrencies may like how the big picture is lining up right now. Overall, this market is continuing to move in the right direction, albeit in a choppy fashion of late. Raul shares his perspectives on other altcoins in the crypto space besides Bitcoin and Ethereum. I have no idea. I'm literally no clue. You know, one week it looks like it's, it's a terrible FOMO market. So one minute it looks like Solana, next minute you've missed the run in Terra, and then you've missed AVAX, and then you've missed Polkadot. You know, it's, it's a nightmare. So the answer is I, I literally have no idea. Um, you know, you notice that there's a huge amount of investors who are very bullish on Terra still, uh, including Remy, who works for me, who was a co-founder of Real Vision uh, and works for me at Global Macro Investor. He's a big investor in that space, loves it, and a lot of people are. Um, a lot of people that I, um, I think are very important investors in the space are very bullish on Polkadot still, and they have been for a long time. It's never really done what everybody expected it to do. But, you know, again, you've got to keep your mind open to these things. Or it could be something else. Something else comes out of the blue, finds a different use case, and before you know it. So it's really hard to trade this kind of stuff. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Do you agree with Raul Paul that Ethereum will eventually flip Bitcoin? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.